Hello. So a few years ago, I came upon a historical pattern for a crochet shawl, and I did my best at the time to adapt it and recreate it. However, looking back, it was done pretty poorly, and I feel like I could do better, so that's what we're going to do in this video. I am very passionate about historical crochet and knitting, and it's something that I would like to explore more, so I'm kind of considering this like the first official video and perhaps what I hope to be a series. At the beginning of 2022, I made a video making a pair of fingerless gloves from a pattern from the Victorian era from 1885 and I was very surprised that people were interested. I kind of just made that video for myself. I figured going into this project I would make it into a proper video, give it a tutorial and everything. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. First, we're gonna look at the original pattern, briefly kind of go over it. Then I'm gonna give you some notes on my adapted version of the pattern, and then we'll get into the tutorial. So if you want to skip around or skip ahead, you can click on the timestamps, which are linked in the description box below. If you wanna just go straight to the tutorial, you can skip ahead to this time. So the original pattern was published in March of 1864 in, I believe, volume 45 of Peterson's Magazine, which was an American women's magazine based in Philadelphia. I will put the link to the full scanned magazine in the description. I'm going to put the link to the image of the shawl and the shawl pattern because they're on different pages and they're quite far apart for some reason, but you can obviously flip through the magazine as you'd like. The original name for this shawl is Crocheted Sontag Shawl by Mrs. Jane Weaver. So first of all, don't know who Mrs. Jane Weaver is. I'm not sure anybody does. It's a name that I've seen accredited with many historical patterns, many of which uh, are in Peterson's magazine, maybe all of them, I'm not sure. I don't know if it's a real person, one person, or a name that was just used. Uh, so there's that. Second, I'm not really sure that the term Sontag is the best to describe this shawl. I'm not an expert on literally any of this, I should have said that in the beginning, but I believe traditionally Sontags mostly just consisted of a back piece that was sort of square or rhombus shaped, and then it would have two straps that would start at each shoulder, and then it would come down and usually cross in front of you and often wrap around and secure in the back. Let's look at the picture. So this is the page. I'm gonna rotate it so that we can look at it in the correct orientation. It's basically a triangle shawl. It's actually just a granny stripe or granny stitch shawl, whatever you wanna call it. The only difference is it has this V notch cut out at the top, which I actually really like because it helps the shawl lay a little bit more flat around your neck than a regular triangle shawl with a flat edge would have, which tends to bunch up a bit, which also looks fine, but I like the way it kind of lays flat. So I made my shawl in a solid kind of charcoal color. The original consists of red, black, and white. So the top half of the shawl is red, and then the bottom half is black and white stripes. I know it's kind of hard to tell in the illustration. And then it has black and red tassels that go around the bottom edge, and at the top where the neck is, I believe there's one row of red, white, and then there's a, a row of black that goes all the way around the shawl. And then the cord is also red and black. So here's the pattern. There's not much to it. It's very contained, which I like. Uh, however, like most historical patterns, we aren't given a lot of information that we are used to getting with modern day patterns. So we're just gonna go ahead and go over this briefly. In the front of the number, we give a very beautiful pattern in colors for a crocheted Sontag shawl pattern, materials, it basically says red, black, and white yarn. I'm, again, not an expert. I have looked into like what yarn weight it might want you to be using, but since I'm making my own version of this pattern, I'm not really paying attention to trying to get an accurate gauge. So basically this pattern is made up of one setup row and then a repeating row that you just do over and over until your shawl is as long as you'd like it to be. First row, three double crochet, one chain, miss three. Three double crochet in the long loop made by the next two chain stitches, one chain, miss three, and repeat to the end of the row, making in the whole 28 groups, three stitches to the group. It doesn't tell you how many chains to start with. Again, not an expert, so I'm not sure if there's like a technique or something that they want you to use. The repeating pattern in this row is three double crochet, chain one, skip three. I believe that the starting chain would be 165 stitches in order to get 28 groups. 
because if you consider a group to be a cluster of three double crochet stitches plus the skipped three stitches so let's say six stitches to a group six times 28 is 168 but you don't want the last group in that row to have those three skipped stitches because you want your row to start and end with a cluster so you would subtract those three stitches so 168 minus 3 is 165 moving on to second row which is the repeating row three double crochet between the second and third long stitch in the last group of first row one chain three double crochet between the groups of first row until 14 groups are worked then work three double crochet one chain three double crochet in the center of the 15th group of the first row this is the middle of the sawn tag and widens in a point at this place as seen in the design one chain three double crochet as before to the end of the row making 14 14 groups as the other side and then I'm just going to quickly read third row this 3d same as second widening in the same way in the center and one group at each end so basically the repeating row is working a granny stripe or granny stitch the point is actually created by increasing in the center of the row so it makes it do that then it says repeat until 12 rows are worked in red then two rows black two rows white two black two white two black one white observing to widen in the same way every row. So you're basically just repeating that one repeat row over and over. So they want you to do 23 rows in total. My shawl was 35 rows, but I'm making a longer one, I think, and um, my gauge is bigger. For the collar, begin where the work was commenced and work one row red, one white without widening, one row of black all around, widening in the center of the back as before, finished with a tied tassel fringe, Alternate black and red, eight threads to each loop, eight inches long, four inches when doubled and tied, cord and tassels of black and red wool at the neck. So, moving into my adopted version, I just want to give you some notes before we get into the tutorial. So for my version, I decided to use a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook and worsted weight yarn. It's sort of a lighter weight worsted weight, which is what I prefer. I didn't mention anything in the tutorial about closures just because there's so many different options. The original pattern wants you to use a cord that is woven through the uh, chain spaces. I just use these little clasps, which I think I got at Joanne Fabrics. Sewed them on with a needle and thread. You could also crochet a loop and put a button on there and do that. I really like the look of taking some wide double faced satin ribbon, cutting really long pieces, and then sewing those onto the corners of the shawl and tying it in a big bow. If I make this again, I'm going to do that. I think, I think it just looks very like Victorian and cute. After you reach the desired length of your shawl, I recommend doing one row of single crochet around the entire thing and that is to not only kind of give it a cleaner edge but also to create a border that we can add the fringe into later. Also I recommend, I did this, you don't have to do this but I did it, doing a row of slip stitches across just the top edge of the shawl which is the edge that wraps around your neck and goes down in the front. I think it just makes it look a little bit cleaner and sturdier and nicer. For the fringe, you want to take your desired length of your fringe and times that number by two and then add one. So I wanted my fringe to be six inches long, so times that by two gives me 12 plus one is 13. That extra plus one inch is just to account for any unevenness that you can trim off later. So I cut pieces of yarn that were 13 inches long. I used two pieces per tassel. I felt like that gave me a nice thickness that wasn't too thick. Lastly, blocking. I don't think this pattern needs too much blocking. The front edges wanted to curl a little bit so I had to block that. My yarn is acrylic so I just steam blocked it really quickly and it worked fine. Lays flat, looks good. So yeah, I think that's it. Um, I'm very very happy with how this pattern came out and I hope you guys like it and uh, let's get into the tutorial.
Thank you.